Good to see you. What's happening? Yeah, it's um, all systems go. Excellent. It's been, uh, really busy, but it's been good. This is your your home studio? Yeah. That's amazing, dude. Usually it's just like a little corner in the in the 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 of the room. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it, that looks very well put together. Yeah, yeah, it's uh it's great. It's a it's a shed in my backyard. It's the dream, mate. So, yeah, pro- probably started out life as like a two and a half car garage. Man, I just live in that. I just <laughs> oh yeah i uh i almost i almost do but you know you uh <laughs> yeah i know you got the family and stuff but, um <laughs> can't, can't live in your own basement <laughs> yeah i know i know it's bad enough for me being in here all the time but uh dude thanks so much for joining us on the show uh mate the new ocean lord album kingdom cold has just been released and uh the reception has just been incredible man people are frothing it yeah it's it's been huge it's you know, have been far far better than you know even our kind of wildest hopes before it all came out. So it's been really really good to see. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And uh, of course, the band's been around since what twenty nineteen, and yeah. uh, it came out for, from a, a convo at the pub. Is that is that correct? Oh yeah, yeah. At the at the Yaya's in Fitzroy, um, in Melbourne. J- Jason and I watching a watching a few bands, and um, yeah, we just had that moment i think of realizing that you know what this isn't just amazing music this is something that we should do who were you watching do you remember who it was at spa oh yeah vividly vividly it was dr colossus oh um and like you know like early dr colossus so um the the tour was the beast wars tour um horse hunter from perth was on the tour just after an album release mm um and so like that that's why we picked it and, and um you know like I, I listened to um much heavier music than jason so i said dude there's this band beast wars um you got to come and see them so um you know we went out but dr colossus i think they played either first or second as just sort of the little um up and comers at the start and uh they played one note and um jason and i both just like looked up from our beers <laughs> had that what is that moment um but yeah it was amazing were they wearing the full garb were they wearing the no <laughs> that was pre stone cutters yeah 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 so there was um there was just two of them it was a two-piece um band which was part of what you know just blew our minds because you see two guys hop up on the stage and you know we hadn't gone and seen a lot of stone of doom um and you know like kind of now deep into that world um, you know what to expect. But, um, you know, previously I'd seen a lot of death metal and black metal and there's always like, you know, like nine guys, like five guitars and just, you know, the whole deal up on stage to make a big noise. And these two guys, and I think he had like, um, at the time, it might have even been like some sort of Telecaster guitar, but he's running it through like an octave pedal, a splitter, two amps and crazy fuzz. And it was just... I think they were the biggest sounding band out of the whole. And how do you sound bigger than Beast Wars? But still, I think they did. It was, yeah. And did the did the band start? I mean, let me start again. I have, my coffee hasn't kicked in. Let me rewind. Uh, did Ocean Lord sound how it did now? Like, did did the initial kickoff for the band always sound as what it does? Yeah, that didn't even make sense. What the fuck, <laughs> fuck am I doing this for? Yeah, no, I get it. I, I get, I get it. what what that garble was, but um, yeah, yeah, I've uh, oh, I've picked something up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, I think what well, one of the first things that we did is we spent some time working on you know sounds, and I'm pretty sure maybe Kingdom was the first sort of song that we started writing, um, and we spent a few weeks trying out um you know different different ways of getting the guitar and bass to work together because what we really really wanted was this enormous room consuming crushing bass mm. and then you know like um from a sound design perspective you got to kind of work out okay well where's the guitar um because um 
like no, a lot of times if you see metal bands play um the band the bass is often like barely audible you know and especially if there's sort of two guitars you can clearly hear this guitar i can hear that guitar i know the bass guy's doing something but i can't actually pick it out of the the kind of soup of noise and so we wanted the opposite of that we wanted bass front and center so yeah we spent a lot of time working out how to get gear that does that um and sort of dial in a sound so i think yeah that was actually the first thing we worked on and we doing heavier stuff prior to to ocean lord were you doing like the black metal death metal thing is that your root yeah yeah that's 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 where i've been playing in bands for um i don't know since like early 2000s mm. um so yeah kind of sort of proggy death black and then sort of a more sort of trad black not not death really um so kind of an entombed sort of vibe and then um yeah and now now stone of doom go it's funny how you know you evolve musically per well personally evolve musically over the years and things change you know i found like yeah. with me, i've gotten heavier not yeah. just in size but also in musical taste over the years you know it's funny that it's like backwards everyone yeah. else is mellowing out no, I've I've done a, a little bit of the same thing. And I think, um, you know, I have very, very wide music listening. And so, um, you know, I could be listening from everything from, you know, like 70s folk through to um, weird avant-garde sort of black metal um, and then just everything in between. So um, it's actually been probably one of the challenges for, for Ocean Lord is to like nail down, we're not going to play every type of music that pete likes um <laughs> we're, we're going to try and find a space that we can live in that's coherent and um and then just kind of like you know add spice and flavor to it but not uh, drift too wildly that's awesome man well and and lyrically it's inspired by hp love lovecraft right is there yeah. any particular was there a particular story like in the mountain you know mountains of madness or or, or, oh yeah, like like Mount, Mountains of Madness is great, and um, you know I, I don't have a great memory for the names of all of the different stories. I sort of just love reading through. Mm. Um, but there's one particular story about a a man in a submarine, um, and he's sort of on this submarine, I think like some sort of scientific journey. But like as he goes, he slowly sort of succumbs to madness as the um this submarine is sort of pulled towards the undersea you know kingdom of um of Cthulhu and I think that's you know that that was some of the inspiration around the idea of kingdom cold of um you know this this guy as he's heading towards death wavers between sort of the terror of death but also the sort of ecstasy of being sort of taken over and controlled by Cthulhu and I sort of really liked, I really like that um, contrast in in HP Lovecraft that there's not just the terror, but you kind of have this window into somebody's mind who's been twisted and taken over. Yeah, yeah, he's he was he was a pretty full on dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you read about you, the great writer, a bit of it, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. But man, he. Yeah, he, he, I, I don't think we'd have a lot of the art that we have these days without him. Like, he's influenced a lot of people musically and, you know, visually as well. Um, in saying that, like, the the, the cover is, is pretty impressive too. That was done, done by Gabby uh, Wilmot. Um, yeah. Is that, that your wife? Yeah, that's my wife. Yeah, she also painted this uh, mural behind me. Whoa. She's incredible, dude. She is a great artist. Um, and and probably the thing that blows me away is how quickly she sort of paints things. I think this was like three or four hours work. Um, but she can just sort of smash something out and get these epic sort of vibes and textures. And So when you were, when, when you uh, brought the idea to her, like, uh, did she, or was it something that inspired you that she had already um, painted or drawn? 
or sketched out or was it the other way around where you went to her and said, look, I, I want, uh, I don't know if that's, if I'm interpreting it right, but you know, it's like a, the shooting style or the thing going into the ocean. Did you take that to her? Yeah. Yeah. So like we sat around um, in, in the band and talked about, you know, like what sort of things we'd want to see on the album cover. And, you know, we talked about what sort of album cover we wanted. And after we thought that we wanted some art made by an artist, we sort of thought about what artist is going to be. And, you know, eventually we sort of came to let's, let's work with Gabby. Um, But yeah, I think the, and the elements on the cover, you know, like I'm, I'm massively obsessed with lighthouses. And so, um, Mm. you know, having, having the lighthouse on there and then this, um, this, sort of thing crashing into the sea is um yeah yeah we we sort of talked about a, a lot of things we sort of presented Gabby with a here's a broad spectrum of ideas this is the sort of things we're thinking about and then you know she had a lot of sort of freedom to find something in that space and and create it do you have the original up in the house or in the studio there or anything like that is it ah uh, it's um sort of safe safe in storage Okay. Um, but definitely is going to get framed and, and put somewhere. Man, it's cool. It's so cool. And, mm. you know, do you, do you work with her in other ways, you know, musically and visually, like, uh, I, I guess with video, video content or, uh, you know, do you ex- inspire each other through, you know, her visual art and your music, you know, is that how you guys sort of put that relationship? A little, a little, I think, um, like we're in very, very different spaces, like genre wise, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and so like, um, Gabby's really focused on, um, art that has a mindfulness and a meditative connection. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, she does a lot of workshops using, um, watercolor and sculpture and things to help people explore themselves, um, in the sense of being mindful and being present and both as a kind of therapeutic practice, but also as a way for artists to get a better connection with their own um, kind of inspiration and internal direction. Um, and so, um, you know, there's, there's not, not a lot of heavy, heavy music and and kind of depressing crushing vibes in that. But, um, but yeah, we, um, we talk a lot about what it's, about I guess art and where does it come from and how do you develop ideas and and things like that. That's really cool. That's really cool to hear, man. Um, yeah, my my wife and and I don't share the same exact musical. <laughs> you know, she, you know, we used to. You know, well, there's still some bands, but now it's like she's like, what are you, what are you listening to now? I'm <laughs> like, it's metal. <laughs> You know, I'm yeah, done, done, yeah. Man. She's like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're um. I think what one of the things that um first connected us actually was that we both listen to such a wide kind of breadth of music, and so mm. um you know, Gab will happily come with me and see um Emperor, and you know we'll have a good night out, and then you know she'll say, hey, there's this First Nation artist who's doing a um songs of Australia aimed at little kids. And I want to go and see it because it's, you know, apparently really highly regarded for her connection with culture and people. I'm like, all right, I'm in. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's see this. <laughs> That's really cool, man. That's really cool. But, uh, uh, of course, you um, recorded it there. You you know, that's that, that correct? Like, that's the yeah. space yeah. where it all came together. Um, that, that sounds like it was a pretty big task, building the studio and then the album. Um, you know, how did you build that to just to, to start working on the album or was it sort of always there as a studio? Um, yeah, it, it wasn't the original idea that we'd record in here. Um, and I think some of that was just not overburdening myself with too big a task. Mm. So when I was making the, um, this room, you know, when, when I first got this, there was like rotting plaster and, you know, someone had set it up as like, sort of like the pool room and then just neglected it for 10 years um and the roof leaked and it was rusty and stuff so really um my only kind of ambition when i was putting it together was to have a place where we could rehearse where i could we could jam loud and i'd never worry about but it's 10 o'clock 
you know, yeah, yeah. and, you know, my child is sleeping or my neighbors might complain or that sort of thing. So I kind of wanted good enough soundproofing to rehearse, but I didn't want to, um, I didn't know that I could ch- achieve good enough soundproofing to record. Um, but anyway, when we finished, the soundproofing was fabulous. And so it was sort of actually, it's probably good enough to record. And then we tried to book some um, recording studio time um, and it got kind of stomped by COVID lockdowns a couple of times. Uh, um, and so then um, then we sort of talked about it and we thought maybe we could record. Um, and I think, you know, the biggest thing I was nervous about is recording drums. You know, like I've got, um, I've done a lot of demoing of tracks. And so I've spent a bunch of time, I've spent enough time with, you um, like logic and pro tools and tools like that to know how to use them. Mm. Um, but I've never actually engineered and recorded an album. So I was a little bit nervous, especially with drums of, you know, like a guitar, put the microphone in front of the guitar, play the guitar. Like yeah. it's, it's not rocket science. Um, there's, there's a lot of nuance, but it it's hard. It's hard to, to make something you can't use. Um, but with drums, you know, the whole like, where do microphones go and how do you capture the room and the space and phasing stuff. And so I was a bit nervous about that, but um, we, I stumbled across, across this um, uh, method. Um, Glyn, Glyn Johns, I think. Yeah. Glyn Johns drum mic technique. That's it. Oh, um, yeah. 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 So he's, he's famous for, I think it was the Beatles um and a whole bunch of people um yeah but anyway he's he's this legendary um engineer um oh yeah so he's done everything from led zeppelin the rolling stones the beatles the who the eagles bob dylan like you know what i mean just Hmm. crazy huge um but the thing that he sort of pioneered was using um two microphones to capture an entire drum kit um and so I watched a bunch of YouTube things and we did a few different trials. Um, and then we ended up using kind of more like four or five microphones on the drums, but just the way that he'd set up these two microphones was a good way of sort of capturing a room, but not being too technical. And I think that, you know, that, that really unlocked the, yeah, actually we can do this. You know, we can record drums because we found a way that's um, pretty foolproof. Drums are really difficult to capture too. Like, yeah, it's, uh, I think that's the hardest <laughs> above. I mean, vocals, it has to be, it depends on the vocalist, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, different microphones and stuff, but yeah, drums, drums are really hard to, to capture, but you did a really good job, dude. You did a real good job at this thing. Like, yeah. Really, really happy with how it came out. And, um, you know, uh, Esben who mixed and mastered it was really helpful as well. So like we sent him some test recordings and said, Hey, what do you think? Here's a whole bunch of tracks with a minute of, you know, playing a song. Um, what should we do? Um, and he sort of gave us some advice about, you know, some mic positioning and uh, adjusting a few things. And so that that helped as well. It made sure we didn't send him, you know, six tracks of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, is this is this going to make things easier for you? Do you think? Have you already started? working on the, yeah, I mean, you've got the formula now. Yeah. 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 Ab- ab- absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're busy kind of working on creating the songs, but the, the great thing about setting, you know, this room up is if we want to take a month to record, we can set all the mics up, all the gears here, and we just don't have to move anything. So yeah, you know, we don't have to be, we don't have to be in or out and it, it's okay if it takes us sort of three weekends to capture drums. Um, we're not sort of setting up and packing down and then trying to get things back into the same space. Yeah, it's so handy. <laughs> I mean, cause there's nothing worse than packing everything down and I'm going to put it all back and try and remember where it was all the continuity. I know. I know. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass, but Hey, Hey, it's good. You got that set up, dude. And of course uh, you've got, uh, your launch show is coming up, uh, including opening for uh, Deville, which is yeah. at Stay Goal on June uh, 16. I, I I I spoke to Andreas from Deville last night, and he's he's keen to uh, to play with everybody. How are you feeling about it, bro? 
Yeah, abs- absolutely pumped. Um, you know, it's such a such a great lineup with, you know, DeVille and Child and Nuada and ourselves is, um, you know, it's it's exciting to play at gigs that I'd go to if I wasn't playing it. Mm. Um, you know, that's that's always one of the one of the great parts of playing music is is thinking, you know what, I'd actually be here tonight if we weren't playing anyway. Um, and so, you know, that's that's really exciting. And um, yeah, I think it's our, it's our first time at Stay Gold as well. So, yeah, very cool. Are you playing the album in full? Is that the plan? Uh, on these shows, no, shows, no. We, um, I don't think we have quite enough time. I think we've got thirty minutes. So typically, we'll we'll drop a song, um, and we've we've already started kind of adding in a couple of new songs. So, um, you know, we'll we'll see. I think it'll be four or five songs from the album. Excellent. And what about uh, coming and visiting us uh, up here? In Queensland, you got plans to come up to the Gold Coast or or, or even Brizzo? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no locked in plans yet, but we're we're working on it. We're really excited to get there. I think um, you know, one of our favorite gigs um was at Banshees in Ipswich, um, which is a tiny little venue. Yeah, I've I've heard of this this Banshee. I haven't I haven't played there. Yeah, the um. I don't know. It it just has this vibe of um, you feel like you've kind of walked into somebody's house and you're playing music for them and their family. Like the just the people that run it and the the people that come are all I don't know, just welcoming and great. And um, yeah, so you know we had a really great time there with um, Fumarol, um, but it was also really cool that um, that we were there at the changeover between two owners um and so the kind of the old guard was moving out and the new the new owners were there um kind of learning the ropes and getting set up to run things and um yeah it was it was really cool well we definitely hope to see it maybe like uh even mose mose desert yeah us absolutely that'd be the perfect venue for you guys especially you know big projector you can have all the visuals and and all kinds of stuff and yeah, stuff. It's such a sick venue. Mm. Shout out to Christian and the Mo's crew because they're, they're mm. amazing. But uh, yeah, they'd be cool if you do. I'll be there, man. I'll be there with bells on. It's gonna awesome. be awesome. But uh, yeah, we um we start we started life with a little um, bit of a vision around doing video and projection. Um, so we've got some video stuff we've made for that that we've used once or twice. Mm. But um, but we found that reliably having anywhere to project upon um is <laughs> not easy <laughs> is 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 not easy so um so I sort of went into the went into the back pocket we've been a little more focused on um generally smoking out a room as much as we can possibly get it without tripping the uh this <laughs> the alarms in the <laughs> we're trying not to trip the smoke alarms not only in our building but whoever's next door because it's just like streaming out the door um <laughs> That's okay. man, it's part of the fun. It's part of the fun. But even Absolutely. venues these days, there's not many venues where you can use smoke. These days we go, you can't use smoke machines. Oh man, <laughs> come on. That's a fun. That's a fun <laughs> setting off the alarms. You know? We've you know, we we've um we we push the smoke really far. Um and most venues have been hundred percent fine. Um I think we've only set the smoke alarms off once. <laughs> so <laughs> it's been it's been pretty good but i don't know like everything from um you know there's a dense mist in the room um to i can't quite see my own guitar sort of levels of of smoke and mist but they're fun they're fun those ones absolutely but uh, uh of course i mean after this uh you know the these launch shows what do you what do you got planned What's what's next for Ocean Lord? Yeah, well, I mean, writing new material is a really um, big part of what we're working on at the moment. Um, you know, on the one hand, this album's you know fresh off the um, off the rank, whatever it's fresh off. But you know, here it is, and it's and it's been released. But on the other hand, we've been writing these songs for a long time. We recorded them a while ago, and you know, the release process was really long. So 
you know, they're, they're sort of simultaneously new and old. Um, so, you know, hopefully we're going to be looking at recording sort of four or five months from now and then um, getting back into um, another exciting sort of cycle of releasing music and seeing what happens. That's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. But in the meantime, we will have all the links down here on the show notes and on the website to Kingdom Cold. Brother, thank you so much for having a chat this morning. My man, Earl of Mug, when the coffee kicks in. But, uh, Cheers. <laughs> uh, brother, take care. And hopefully, we'll see you very soon up here in Queensland. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Thanks, mate.